Welcome back. My name is Steve Sexton, your host. You know, our next segment, we have Alan Nevin. Alan is the Director of Economics and Market Research for the Xperia Group. He's a wonderful man when it comes to real estate. Many people want it, or almost everybody is doing a real estate project here in San Diego and many other places want to get his blessing to make sure it's going to work out. Alan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. You know what? I wanted to talk to you about a few things, or actually have you educate us about a few things. How is real estate working nationally, and then how is it working here, here in San Diego, and what are the projections for, you know, moving forward? Well, basically, overall, things are pretty positive around the United States. There, you know, there are a few spots that mm -hmm. uh, are overbuilt, and a few that uh, are underbuilt, mm -hmm. but pretty much we're doing very well. Okay. Now, in San Diego, which is the prime focus for us here today, sure. Uh, tell me about how real estate's going. Are we seeing um, price increases? What are, we, what are we seeing? Well, when I mentioned underbuilt, we're one of those places. Oh. Because if you just play it by the numbers, we actually are about 50,000 housing units short of what we should be. Oh, so and, what does that mean? Well, it means there are a lot of folks who are buying in Riverside we really don't want to. Mm -hmm. There are a lot who are buying in the uh, eastern part of Tijuana. Oh. And of course, the occupancy rate in apartments has gone through the roof up to almost 100%. So that's picking up some of the slack. And then there are a lot of people who are doubling up. What do you mean by doubling up? Well, there are two, three, or four to the apartment, singles included, uh -huh. uh, young professionals. And it's a pretty difficult situation out there right now. So what you're saying is when it comes to renting, um, landlords are loving it because rents are going up. They are. Mm -hmm. However, I have found that the landlords are not being greedy. Well, that's a good uh, thing. Yeah, the rents seem to be going up at 3 to 4% a year. Okay. Just and that's... Almost an inflationary rate. Yeah. Oh, it's higher than inflation, but uh, nonetheless, it's acceptable. Well, no, I understand that. Now, <laughs> when it comes to housing prices, what are we expected to see here in San Diego? Depends where you live. Okay. And, uh, the answer is overall, we're probably at the 5 to 7% a year mm -hmm. increase, but there's some places that are going higher than that and others lower. So in other words, like if you're closer to the beach, you're probably you're going to see higher because there's just no more homes there. Well, also because of the out-of-town market and the Mexican and the Canadian mm -hmm. and the uh, Far Eastern market that isn't limited by uh, qualifi qualifying for loans. Okay, so they come in and buy cash and that works out yeah. really well. I mean, we're seeing condominiums near the coast mm -hmm. selling for well in excess of $1,000 a square foot. A couple of the newer projects are up in the 1500 to 1800 square foot range. Yeah, one of my clients, um, her condominium in Del Mar just went up $200,000 over the last three years just, be, just because there's a number of uh, people coming in wanting to pay cash for them because they want a condo next to the beach. Absolutely. And money is no object. Now, you know what? We keep seeing Alan Yellen, um, uh, Janet Yellen, not Alan Yellen, <laughs> but Janet Yellen, she keeps talking about we're thinking about this rate increase. And then you have some people saying that we should do it, some people saying we shouldn't. You know what, we, I've, heard, I've talked to you many times before in the last couple of years. Yep. What do you think, what do you make of all this? Is it bluster, is it trying to keep people, you know what, where are they going with the rate increases, or are they well, having rate increases? I think it's absurd to raise rates. I don't see where our economy is so robust mm -hmm. that we can stand an increase in rates. So it, inflation is just non-existent? Well, it, it, it's absolutely, uh, it may be minus at this point, mm -hmm. but that doesn't relate to real estate. I should, I always try to point that out, that uh, our inflation is uh, mostly on consumer goods. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you know, with the price of oil down substantially, that affects uh, the pricing on everything that's made of oil, and that's going down in that price. Yeah, and last Thursday, they just had that big, uh, that big meeting, and that big meeting says, hey, you know what, we're going to look at driving drillers out of this marketplace, according to what the Sheik said in Saudi Arabia, so we can see oil prices going down for a little bit further. Well, even if they stay in the 30 to 40 range, that's pretty much of a bargain. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that is an indication that we don't have any inflation, mm -hmm. and we really don't. 
Now, what do you make of the, the when, when we look at the euro, you know, they're in negative interest rates. You got Japan, Sweden, many other countries in negative interest rates. Well, I mean, look at Canada, which is doing beautifully, and yet their value of their dollar has gone from equal to ours to 20% less than ours. It's, now, why is that? Uh, it's just part of the economics of the world. Okay. Uh, I mean, going to Canada for vacation now is a marvelous bargain. Well, that's the way it was when I was a little kid. That was wonderful. We loved it. That's right. <laughs> we could buy a whole lot more. Exactly. In fact, we had uh, Wayne Dunlap, a travel expert, said the world's on sale because an exchange rate's different. And in some countries, they're 20, 30, 40 percent less than ours. Oh, yeah. Uh, Argentina is an unbelievable bargain. Mm -hmm. uh, but even Europe is down almost, not quite, but down to that one-to-one -one level, whereas Five years ago, it was a dollar fifty to one, mm -hmm. and so we're yeah. In the nineties, there's a, a buck ninety two to to one. Yeah, yeah. But the basic point is that the U.S. is incredibly strong as a nation economically, mm -hmm. and other places aren't doing as well. Now, if you were to predict, hey, when would I likely see a rate increase? Because I don't foresee. You know, I personally don't feel they're going to ra increase rates because they create problems worldwide because obviously the U.S. dollar would be, you know, m worth much more, create problems with our trade, all that kind of stuff. When would we like to see some sort of rate increases here in the United States? Well, the reality is that our construction market, our single-family housing market, isn't very strong now. Mm -hmm. And raising rates would not be a terribly bright thing for the government to do because it would uh, <laughs> probably discourage people from buying, and we really need to keep those rates low to keep the home building business moving forward in, the, in this country. Would it make sense to loosen up the credit, you know, that Dodd-Frank came in and constricted the ability for people to qualify for loans and all yeah. that? Do you see that, you yeah. know, loosening up a little bit? The, the answer is that it's nowhere near as bad as people think. Mm -hmm. And if you have a decent credit score, there's tons of money. The banks are desperate to get money out. Mm -hmm. So there's really not that terrible a situation. And, and you can even get subprime loans today oh. for less than what first trustees were going back in 06 and 07. Oh, so what are, what are uh, subprime loans going for right now? Oh, maybe it's 7 8%. Okay, so if somebody can afford 7 8%, that works out quite well. Yeah, but if you have a, uh, a FICO score over 600, you're pretty, pretty good shape to get yourself a traditional loan. Now, from a, a, a planning standpoint, so if you were looking at somebody that had a decent amount of debt, this would be the time to get it paid off because once interest rates start moving forward, do you think they're going to start moving forward like Alan Greenspan did uh, way back when when he started raising almost a quarter a month? I don't see that happening. I really don't. As long as countries like China and Japan have interest rates that are effectively zero, mm -hmm. I don't see the math. I don't understand why anyone here would want to raise rates. So it looks like we've got a long time before interest rates rise. I think so. That's wonderful, Alan. Hey, you know what? My understanding is you have a new book coming out. I do. Tell us all about uh, it. Rather quickly. It's called The Great Divide. And it really talks about the next 25 years in the world and the United States and what's happening, not just economically, but demographics. And demographics really guide what happens in the world. And there are basically a handful of nations that uh, will do very well in the next quarter century and a handful of states here in, in the United States. Basically, there are 14 states that make up about 75% of all the economic growth in this country. Uh, hopefully California's in one of those. Uh, we're, we're the leader. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're, we're tied with uh, uh, Texas and Florida. So why are they leaders? Well, it's interesting. California is a leader because we have such incredible growth in our high-tech industries that we lead the world in biotech, and social media, certainly, mm -hmm. and uh, the electronics, and really aerospace as well. We're not building as many planes, but we're creating 
the components. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're we're really doing very very well in the state. I mean we're we're gaining over three hundred thousand jobs a year in this state. And that's, oh wow! That's pretty. We've done even with all the taxes and all the regulations, we're well, still creating that many jobs. Since the recession, we've added one point eight million jobs in this state. Is that because in the Midwest and many of these locations that industry is leaving, like you see Detroit, Michigan, um, you see industry leaving and people are trying to find worthwhile jobs, so they're coming out here to California? Is that really what it comes down to? Basically what happens is when a smart kid gets out of high school in Detroit, they come south. It might be Atlanta or Dallas or San Diego, but they leave. And what you see in all of these Midwest, Northeastern states is that the median age keeps rising because the kids just keep leaving. Okay. So it's really a situation that hasn't changed, by the way. I've been tracking this since the 70s, and the trend has not changed one iota. So what you're saying is when industry starts compressing, um, the smart people start leaving and going to places where there's opportunity. Absolutely. And that's going to continue to happen for the next 25 years. Absolutely. And there's going to be 14 or 15 places around the United States where most of those jobs are going to be. And the, then yeah. we're going to see the little dust town, so to speak, in the, the inner yeah. cities that aren't, aren't uh, focused on yeah, we, economic survival. Yeah, we have more or less a half moon that starts at the state of Washington, mm -hmm. works its way around, down through California, over to Texas, Florida, and up into the Washington, D.C. area. And that's where 75% of not only all the new jobs are taking place, but all of the population gains as well. So if I was looking to invest for the future, I'd be looking at certain states. And if I was going to look at making money in those states, it would make sense of those top 14, wouldn't it? You really have to do that. And I just, uh, I feel very badly for people who own properties in the states that are going nowhere. Yeah, I understand. Alan, thank you for being part of the show today. The information you provide will make a difference in people's lives, and thank you for being here. It's